James, honey, did something happen to you? After we got separated in that long hallway? Are you confusing me with someone else? <laughs> you were always so forgetful. Remember that time in the hotel? Maria? You said you took everything, but you forgot that videotape we made. I wonder if it's still there. How do you know about that? Aren't you Maria? Hello guys, uh, welcome to the most uh, anticipated, anticipated uh, Let's Play series uh, that I'm going to be doing right now. Um, hopefully I'll be able to finish it uh, before the end of October. Uh, this is my Let's Play series of uh, Silent Hill 2. Um, the main reason why I'm doing this Let's Play is to celebrate um Silent Hill 2's uh 20th anniversary which was I think it was released on September 24th 2001 and uh, uh of course if you guys are already subscribed to my channel or um if you guys are already subscribed to my channel you know that I did a botched poor attempt at doing a live stream uh video 
or doing a live stream uh, celebrating the Silent Hill 2 uh, 20th anniversary and of course it, it was a little bit bosh because get caught off and I decided to do well then and there I decided I, I'll do a, a let's play series of it uh, for the month of October uh, mainly to celebrate the um, 20th anniversary of Silent Hill 2 but also for uh, the special occasion of it being uh, part of uh, Halloween. So, um, yeah, let's get started. Um, I usually have these uh, settings on normal. Um, but, yeah. Restless dreams. I see that town. Silent Hill. You promised you'd take me there again someday. But you never did. Well, I'm alone there now. In our special place. Waiting for you. got a letter. The name on the envelope said, Mary. My wife's name. It's ridiculous. Couldn't possibly be true. That's what I keep telling myself. A dead person can't write a letter. Mary died of that damn disease three years ago. So then, why am I looking for her? Our special place. What could she mean? This whole town was our special place. Does she mean the park on the lake? We spent the whole day there. Just the two of us, staring at the water. Could Mary really be there? Is she really alive? Waiting for me? I like how the, the background over here of the uh, lake, especially of the town across, is like a JPEG image. Uh, I think they actually took this in the US. I'm not sure where, but it looks like something that will exist in the US. Oh, uh, we'll just get in the map first. I got a map of Silent Hill. But yeah, uh, it's noticeable this is like a JPEG background. Um, 
Right, it's not too bad. It, it blends well with the background. Uh, it's not too distracting or anything like that. But yeah, um... So, this is like, um... Yeah, it's my... Oh, this is the road I came in on. There's no point in going back. Okay, so we can't go that way. Yeah, this is my, um... I think the last time I played this game was in, uh, I think it was last year. It was last year when I played this game, and uh, I guess as normally as I would play games uh, if I were... And uh, I guess uh, in sort of like uh, what I sometimes usually do... Um, I would, um, w whenever I'm depressed, I would sometimes, uh, pop in a game like this, or either that, or I would watch, like, old school, like, uh, classic movies, like, uh, once from the 30s, or even the 50s or 60s, so, at least on TV, anyway, um, I don't have a lot of old classic movies from around that era. But, um, yeah. So, yeah, last time I played this game, uh, I, I guess, uh, it was during a depressing moment at my time. But it wasn't too bad, though. But I just saw uh, a pop in Silent Hill 2, just, you know, just to help m get my mind off things, get myself distracted with, like, a depressing story. I'm sure many people uh, have done something like that. Um,. But yeah, I won't be doing um, any commentaries during the cutscenes because for a story like this, I would like uh, you guys to drink in, um, or I would like you guys to experience the story, the the story along with me. Uh, so I won't be doing any commentary during cutscenes. I'll just leave it quiet during those and just leave the commentary during the uh, gameplay yeah but yeah um, walking through this yeah walking through this frog uh, kind of creeped me out because I was the first time playing this game uh, I was kind of worried that there might be a jump scare during the fog or or some like there was some kind of monster that would pop out from the fog or something like that, a jump scare and all that. And, you know, all the while, uh, all the while, while you're walking through, you keep hearing these like monster, uh, unnatural sort of monster sounds. It just re really uh, adds to like the atmosphere of uh, this game, and and, uh, and especially like the graphics, they hold up well. Especially the fog that hides the. Uh, Basically hides the, the draw distance. Um, it was one of those things that the Silent Hill 2 um, remastered, uh, quote unquote remastered, uh, boshed up on is that they got rid of the fog. Um, and the draw distance is uh, very noticeable. I'm not sure if it's the same with uh, the PC port of this game, probably. Because I know there's like the widescreen problem where you see characters pop in and out or something like that. Of course there is a mod to fix that to, you know, uh, fix that widescreen kind of problem. But yeah. Um, there's a well here. There's something in the well. What's that? Look at this, makes me feel like someone's groping around inside my skull. It gives me a weird feeling. Yeah, as you can see, this is the last save I did during the uh, live stream, so we'll just ride over that. Um, there are multiple endings for this game. Um, I pull out the, the memory card um, from my uh, PS2 uh, before the intro started. and uh, Because if, if you play the intro after you've completed the game, it includes the dialogue in it, uh, which is a little bit spoilery. 
but uh, I don't think it, not too much, but uh, I just removed it just in case. But yeah, I was gonna uh, comment, I think I commented on my live stream that the sort of like walk through the forest reminded me a lot of uh, Dante's Inferno, where Dante's like walking, where he's like lost in the woods and he's walking around. You know, like the the beginning part where he's like, uh, I think midway upon our journey, um, I find myself in the forest, um, deep, dark, and weary, or something like that. I'm not sure if that's the exact quote I got, but yeah, the the, the opening sequence where you were just walking through the forest. Uh, I mean, besides like the monster sounds, it might be a lot of uh, Dante's Inferno. Um, I haven't finished that book yet, unfortunately. Um, I, I'm, I stopped at the part where they encounter the uh, Minotaur you know, on one of those circles of hell or something. So I haven't finished it yet, unfortunately. But Excuse me, I... Oh, I, I'm sorry. I, I was just... No, it's just... okay. I didn't mean to scare you. I'm kind of lost. Lost? Yeah. I'm looking for Silent Hill. Is this the right way? Um, yeah. It's hard to see with this fog, but there's only the one road. You can't miss it. Thanks. But... Yes? I think you'd better stay away. This... Uh... Th this town... There's something wrong with it. It's kind of hard to explain, but... Is it dangerous? Maybe. And it's not just the fog, either. Okay, it's... I got it. I'll be careful. I'm not lying. No, I believe you. It's just... I guess I really don't care if it's dangerous or not. I'm going to town either way. But why? I'm looking for... someone. Who... who, who is it? Someone... very important to me. I'd do anything if I could be with her again. Me too. I'm looking for my mama. I, I mean my mother. It's been so long since I've seen her. I thought my father and brother were here, but... I can't find them either. I I'm sorry. It's not your no, problem. I... I hope you find them. Yeah, you too. Yeah, uh, the soundtrack of this game is also really, really uh, amazing. This is a song I, uh, I would sometimes listen to on my uh, Spotify. I think it's called White Noise or something like that. But yeah, the soundtrack is very, very phenomenal. Um, let me see. Oh yeah, so the actress who plays, um, well I don't want to review her name yet because that's a little bit spoiled. I'm getting a little ahead of myself. But, um, so the actress um, who plays that character, uh, so the actress is like 40 years old, but the uh, but the character, she's supposed to be, uh, like, 17. Uh, sem looks like a teenager, so, like, yeah, she's supposed to be, like, 17. So, uh, it's a pretty, uh, interesting kind of 
you know, artistic kind of thing going on. You know, like a 40-year-old, like, actress playing a 17-year-old. Um... Oh yeah, this, uh, one of th this is one of the things you get in uh, New Game Plus, or after you beat the game, you get the uh, the chainsaw here. I right, also have uh, the letter from Mary. Uh, that's definitely Mary's name in her own handwriting on the front of the envelope. Uh, it's just basically uh, what, what you hear in the beginning of the uh, intro after you exit the bathroom. Uh, in my restless dreams, I see that town, Silent Hill. You promised you'd take me there again someday, but you never did. Well, I'm alone there now, in our special place, waiting for you. And this one uh, is just a photo of uh, Mary when she was uh, still healthy. But, um, but yeah, um, some interesting facts, especially when I, uh, watched an interesting, uh, documentary in the making of Silent Hill 2, um, uh, and it's interesting to see that they hired a 40-year-old, uh, actress to play, like, a 17, 17-year-old, 17 um, uh, you know, sort of like an artistic, uh, kind of, um, thing to it, um, you know, especially, you know, about about the character's backstory. Uh, she's a reoccurring character in this uh, game, so, yeah. But, um... What was I gonna say? Um... Yeah, I also especially like the film grain look of this game, especially the end game also. Um, uh, gives that um, 70s horror film vibe to it. Uh, reminds me a lot of that. Um, uh, a friend of mine, um, Abby, uh, she asked me during the live stream, uh, how I was, how I was introduced, how I was first introduced to, um, Silent Hill. And, uh, my memory's a little hazy on that. Uh, I don't remember when I first got introduced to the series. Um, I remember growing up, I've always seen the game in the video game stores like GameStop, um, where they would sell that, uh, sell that game, like, uh, either Silent Hill 2 or Silent Hill 3. The one I, I remember, um, seeing, I forgot the title of the game, but it's like, um, it's a game called, uh, Condemned Criminal Origins. Criminal Origins, which, uh, is another game I'll p I plan to also play, uh, probably for next, uh, Halloween month or something like that. But, um, yeah, Condemned Criminal Origins, I usually, I sometimes would see this game, uh, or I see the game case of it a lot going through it. I would see a lot of right at end. Uh, video games that were interest me, but I couldn't play them because, of course, I was young at the time. Um, I think in 2001, I was like four years old or something like that. But, um, but I didn't play. I've always seen like clips in video game play. Or no, I don't think I did. But, um, yeah, I never, I've always heard about these games, but I never played them until, uh, I want to say 2017, 2018, when I first played, uh, Silent Hill 2 for the first time, um, because, uh, well, um, I didn't own a PlayStation 2 growing up, uh, until around... I want to say late middle school or early high school is when I was able to get a PlayStation 2 for the first time. Uh, the games I owned growing up were the, at least around 2001 anyway, were, uh, or the early 2000s anyway, were uh, the GameCube and the original Xbox. And uh, of course my dad owned uh, 
owned a Nintendo 64, but unfortunately he, I think he sold and gave it away. Uh, I'm not sure when, but probably around mid or late elementary school. Uh, when I was in mid or late elementary school or something like that. But, um, yeah, so Silent Hill 2 was like the first game I played. And then uh, I was able to get a copy of Silent Hill 1. And uh, I really like that game too. Um, I want to say the first Silent Hill one, or, or I want to say the first Silent Hill was a lot scarier than uh, Silent Hill 2. At least in my opinion. Um, while Silent Hill 2 is also scary in its own right, um, it, it's more, more like psychological horror kind of scary than... Um, I mean, there's some psychological horror in the first Silent Hill 2, but I find Silent Hill 1 more scarier than the... or a lot more scarier than the Silent Hill 2, just because of how the developers behind uh, Silent Hill 1, like uh, Team Silent, uh, they developed Silent Hill uh, 1 through 4. Um, it was just, I, I think that first time they made their scares, it was really really effective um, in my opinion uh, especially like with the the ambient music and all that or, or just some music or in general for the the Silent Hill 1 soundtrack um, yeah I think we're in Silent Hill right now uh, but yeah um, I'm not sure where I'm supposed to go oh I have the map Okay, yeah, so we're going that way, and the one, what's cool about, um, well, there's also, like, uh, like the, all of the, um, Silent Hill games, um, I'm not sure if it's the same for four, but from one through three, um, you'll have notes marked on your map, especially, like, important objectives or something like, so we're supposed to go to... Rosewater Park uh, is where our supposed um, special place that uh, Mary mentioned in the letter. Are these marks blood? A shadow just now. But, uh, yeah, so Silent Hill 2... Yeah, Silent Hill 1, I, I would say is a lot scarier than Silent Hill 2. Silent Hill 2, um... I just like how, I think it's a lot more effective with the scares, especially like, not just with the soundtrack, but also the, the, the uh, I guess, creepy atmosphere, like with its graphics and, um, and environment, or like, uh, and especially like the environments and all that. Um, Especially like with the sound design, um, I remember in the first, yeah, something I looked up for the making of Silent Hill 1 is that one of the, uh, song tracks, or even like sound design, when, um, we hear sort of like a, I guess sort of like a distorted screaming, it is actually like the sound of, uh, dentist drill. <laughs> which is pretty creepy uh, it's pretty perfected especially like when you distort it and all that but um yeah I, I think uh, Silent Hill 1 is more effective in the scares than Silent Hill 2 although Silent Hill 2 is also scary in its own right so uh, whenever James turns his head that means there's an item uh, that's nearby that you can pick up or there's like a safe point which is uh, the red paper thing 
guy hook drink. I think I played Silent Hill 1 a year, or probably the same year after I played Silent Hill 2, because I wanted to try out the other Silent Hill games. And uh, I wanted to get a copy of uh, Silent Hill 3 really bad. Uh, I wasn't able to until uh, this year, uh, like, uh, I think last month. It was a week before the, the uh, 20th anniversary of Silent Hill 2. Was when I was able to um, finally get a copy of Silent Hill 3, which uh, my copy also includes the uh, the soundtrack, which is uh, pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I still haven't played Silent Hill 3 yet. But uh, once I'm done with the Let's Play series of uh, Silent Hill 2, I'll definitely get jump to uh, Silent Hill 3 after. Uh, uh, so Silent Hill 3 will be my uh, next uh, Let's Play series for this channel. I think I just only saw the game cases of uh, the Silent Hill games, uh, especially 2. Or just mainly 2 and 3 is when I usually saw the game cases. Uh, just when I at least technically first introduced, although I haven't played any at it, so... Uh, I guess a, a year or two after high school, so uh, yeah. But I thought it was a interesting question. So, I maybe was a little hazy of how I was introduced to these games. I also forgot that you can, uh, you can strafe in this game by using the left and right bumpers. Good. Or uh, L1 and L2. Is it dead? What the hell is it? It's not human. What the? I'd better take it anyway. I might need it. Okay, so let's check our inventory. So, radio, a uh, small portable radio emits static when monsters are nearby. Uh, and then also a wind plank. Uh, We'll just have it unequipped for now. I don't think we can. We don't have to worry about uh, dealing with the uh, enemies. Because I think with those monsters, you don't have to worry about them. But um, I think once you get to the docks, then uh, you have to ready a weapon. So, uh, to. I like this, I'll show you. So, to ready a weapon, uh, you just. Press the R2 to ready it, and then just uh, press or hold the, the X button to attack it. 
And when the enemies are down, you just press X to, uh, to finally, like, kill them and all that. But, uh, yeah. Um, so, since I'm on New Game Plus, um, it's open to the multiple endings this game has. But, uh, I want to stick with the, the original ending when you first play the game, uh, because... And so I'll, I'll, tr I'll try to avoid uh, getting the other endings as, uh, as much as I can. Um, the last time I played this game, I got the, uh, one of the other different endings. So, uh, but I just want to go for the original ending. And it's an ending I, I much prefer uh, over the, uh, that one other ending, which uh, one, two, one or two of the developers of the this game uh, said is their canon ending for Silent Hill 2. Uh, especially like the canon, canon ending for the uh, the uh, Japanese novelization of uh, Silent Hill 2. Which uh, I'm curious to read to how we, uh, how the story goes in that game, or, or in that uh, in that novel? Yeah, see, uh, it will do marks if uh, if a path is like blocked or something like that. But uh, I think we need to get something from uh, down the street, according to the map. Yeah, you have a run button, but um, you'll slow down a little bit due to um, your, your stamina will lower. In the lower your stamina, the the slower your uh, running speed is. So you want to reserve on that. You're not gonna like fully stop if you were. Uh, you're not gonna like fully run out of run out of stamina, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, it's the same thing with uh, Silent Hill 1, and I'm guessing also Silent Hill uh, 3, so you don't have to worry about running out of stamina, but you want to preserve it if you want to go faster. So I just picked up a first aid kit. RV. I think there's also uh, a New Game Plus item in here, also. Uh, well, I thought there was. Uh, unless, let me check real quick. No. Yeah, I, I thought... Um, or maybe after I pick this up, maybe it will. There's a memo lying on the sofa. I'll wait at bar and easily's. All right, so that's our destination, Ely's bar. Copy it on my own map. Yeah, because I thought the spray would be there. But I guess it disappeared because, um, I used it on my last game, new game plus, so I probably can't use it. I have to start like a new new game before I completed the game anyway. Which is kind of a bummer, but whatever. Not the end of the world. Um, I, I, I probably wouldn't be too effective based on my, uh, my ranking, because, um, you need to get like uh, 10 stars in order to use uh, the effective part of the, uh, the spray can. Because uh, if I use the spray can, or if I did get the spray can on that, it would just be 
I would just only get the white spray, which just freezes enemies. It's, it's a little bit effective, but um, but yeah, but not like the effect where it will kill them, which is a little bit more important. <laughs> But uh, if you get a 10 star rig, you'll get the green spray, which kills enemies in one hit. Uh, and that also goes for, I think it also goes for the bosses. Uh, yeah. There's some fun new game plus in um, Silent Hill 1. Like uh, in Silent Hill 1, uh, I think if you, yeah, if you complete one of the good endings and one of the bad endings, like there's a um, there's a good plus ending and a good regular good ending. Well, not regular, just good ending in general without the plus. And there's also the bad plus ending and just the bad ending. So um, okay, here we go. So if you get both of those endings, you'll get access to the store in the it's like first level of uh, or the at least the first house you go into. Uh, there's like a part where you can have access to the store and you'll get like a samurai sword, which is pretty cool. Okay, there's a map here. What's that symbol at the end of Martin Street? Copy that onto my own map. Yeah. And uh, you don't want to go and uh, read this part, although it's pretty understandable uh, from reading it without going forward to read that part. But that attributes to one of the uh, other endings of uh, Silent Hill 2. But yeah, uh, besides like a samurai sword, you can also get... Uh, I think like if you get a... I forgot how you got the other weapon in the game, but it's like a... Oh yeah, yeah, so if you, if you got the... Uh, so all three of these games... I'm not sure if the fourth one has it, but all three of these games, um, they have a uh, UFO ending. So, if you got the UFO ending in Silent Hill 1, you'll automatically unlock the uh, the alien ray gun. It, and what's cool about it is that it'll always be in your inventory, so you can use it whenever you want. Uh, so yeah, it has a lot of fun uh, extras. Um, for Silent Hill 2, doesn't have a lot of extras. Just has a chainsaw and the green spray thing, but it's not too, not too fun to use compared to Silent Hill uh, 1 and 3. Uh, unfortunately, but it's not a big deal breaker. Oh, all right, that's a little bit of a jump scare. It wasn't too bad to jump scare for me because I, I remember this part. But yeah, we don't have to worry about him now. Or, I mean, we don't have to worry about him ever, anyway. Yeah, if you hear that sound, I think that's the uh, cockroach enemies, which uh, I think you'll be able to stomp on them, but they're kind of a pain in the ass to deal with, so I will ignore them if you can. Another Forsake hit, and these are the handgun bullets. Yep. So we'll get like a handgun later in the game. Uh, or not like too late later. in darkness, opening into nightmares. 
Okay, it's locked so we can't go here. Oh, shit. Ow. Alright, we're a little bit surrounded by them, so let's get on over to this cave. Garbage, no use for that. Yeah, there's another door on the other side, which is the second entrance, but it's locked, so we'll get to that later. Got a map of the apartment building. Yeah, especially like whenever I watch you know, the uh, cutscenes of this game, um, I always find myself like reciting reciting lines from uh, James. I can do a pretty good uh, James Sutherland uh, interpretation because uh, I like to. This sort of uh, weird uh, voice acting, although it is intentional. Uh, it's the same thing with the, the first Silent Hill, and especially the third one. So it's, since you have a map, uh, you can only shine. Uh, you can only pick up or use a map when you are in uh, when you are in a lit uh, when you're under a lit places. But if you're in a dark, uh, you can't use them. So yeah. Right now it's a little super dark on my end. At least like it uh, has like a show and shows it a little bit. Okay. Yeah, so we'll go to the first floor. We'll just have our jeans uh, out just in case. It's pretty effective. I think it also does uh, one hit damage. But yeah, it's too dark to read the map, so you have to get in lit areas like this in order to, uh, to use a map. There's a trash chute with some kind of strange garbage stuck in the hole. Yeah, so that's one of our puzzles that uh, we'll just deal with later. Television, there's nothing unusual about it. Yeah, I guess you can't read that because it's too dark. Large clock is too dark to see it well. Alright, so we're gonna have to find, uh, have to find, uh, 
there is a flashlight in this game that you can use. So we're gonna have to find the. Of course, it marks the clock on the map to go back to. Okay, here we go. It's, uh, it's our first flashlight. Oh, I just noticed uh, the monster in that background right there. But yeah, uh, this dress uh, looks a lot like uh, Mary's dress, which is interesting to uh, know. It looks a lot like uh, Mary's uh, uh, outfit. Alright, so we got our flashlight. <laughs> Just a jump scare. Uh, we don't have to worry about that monster. Let me try to go for at least, for the most part, uh, pacifist. Uh, to get less kills as possible for this, uh, you know, this let's play. So, yeah, thankfully now that we have the flashlight, uh, we can bring up our map as many times as we want. Here. Yeah, this part was definitely creepy. Just this monster just hanging out here. Oh, right, so that's the one. Yeah. yeah, thankfully, when you're in the pause menu or using the map, you don't have to worry about the monsters attacking you while you're looking through stuff. So. Thing. Okay, so we'll just have to go back out to the hallway. Oh, I thought that was a, looked like another energy drink. What was anti bottle thing? There's a key on the ground on the other side of the bars. If I stretch my arm out, I just might be able to reach it. Will you pick it up? Yes. No matter how far I stretch. Who's that kid? But yeah, the the voice acting is also really good. Um, it runs the voice acting, uh, especially like the whole game in general, runs me a lot of um, Twin Peaks, uh, especially the dialogue, which uh, of course the developers uh, the, uh, of Team Silent, they were big fans of uh, Silent Hill. Uh, Alright, here we go. There's a, there's a shopping cart. What is that doing here? 
Yep, and we got our first handgun in the game. Um, we'll have to, we don't have to use it for now. Oh, so um, cool thing is, after you beat the game each time, um, so you go to options menus. Of course, you can configure the screen position and brightness level and all that. But um, of course the controls or whatever but uh, if you do if you press R1 or L1 it'll take you to this screen because uh, it'll have a weapon control uh, blood color which I don't know why people want to change blood or something and there's the uh, bullet adjustment so you can have as much uh, bullets uh, at least like I think scat either scatter around, you have more bullets scattered around to get, or the amount of bullets you get when you pick up um, any uh, ammo or something like that. So, but yeah, it's interesting to know if you plan to play this game and you just want to make it a little easier uh, to get more uh, bullets. Uh, I think, yeah, bullets are scarce if you don't use them wisely. Uh, Alright, I think that's everything. Oh, sorry. Next, next part of the map. Um, but yeah, uh, just learned like this year that um, Twin Peaks was a uh, was very very popular in the uh, in Japan. Same with the uh, same with James Bond. He he's very pop he's very popular in the uh, in Japan uh, at that time anyway. So when Twin Peaks first came out, it was you know. Big and big and very popular in Japan. A lot of people, uh, a lot of Japanese uh, people, lo love that show a lot. All right, so let's go back here. What was that? Some kind of noise north of here. And of course, this is the first time you see uh, the pyramid head monster here. Especially creepy how uh, it's all red, or there's like a red lighting to it. Oh, there's a key here. Key to room 202. Yeah, I think what's interesting, so the model they use there is uh, James Sutherland's model, I think. It's uh, a little creepy there. It's not, it must be from the person who lived here. Three needles stand of three different heights. The fat, the tall, and the thin. From slow to fast, they move to... From slow to fast, they move to the right. Scar rests not on three but fifteen. Okay, scar rests not on three but fifteen. Okay. Oh yeah, so what's this? So this is part of the um, one of the first puzzles that you do. So okay. 
Yeah, depending on like, so there's the hour uh, part, the, the minute part, and the seconds part, I think. So we have to position them to, uh, so Mildred is minute, uh, Scott is second, and Henry is uh, hour. So, oh, and of course it will show you the text there if you can't read that part. It is writing on the clock. Scars from the past shall lose in the all that stops time. Will you push the clock? Okay, we're gonna say no because uh, it's not gonna do anything. So yeah, we're gonna have to do the the clock is the first puzzle that we're gonna do in this game. Clock is stopped at 10:44 and 50 seconds. Face play is closed. It is locked. You can search the news the clock like this. All right, so we're gonna have to go to. Yeah, I think room 202 uh, that's our best place to go if, uh, we're going to have to find the uh, find the uh, key to the uh, night clock or to open it so room 202 is just down there Of course, if you press um, L2, it'll bring the camera, it'll help you adjust the camera, like to in front of the character instead of like the fixed camera going like in front of your cam, in front of your character, so um, you can see the uh, whole room, or like it'll help you see the, the whole room. Body of dead butterflies on the ground. There's nothing else of interest. It's too dark to tell for sure, but I think there's something on the other side of the hole. Will you investigate? Yes. Alright, so we got the clock key. Alright, so let's go back to that room. Yeah, it's pretty interesting to know like something like Twin Peaks would become like so popular or like for any American show to be popular in, uh, in uh, Japan. I guess it's the same also for novels too because of course, you know, with anime like uh, I guess like Akira counts too, but like anime like uh, Akira and uh, especially Ghost in the Shell, they're very much inspired by the, the works of Phil K. Dick, especially for the cyberpunk kind of thing. Because he was like the first one to start off like the cyberpunk, I guess, kind of genre. Um, I'm not sure if it was from his story, Do Android Stream for Electric Sheep, uh, which was adapted to, which uh, the which was adapted to the film uh, Blade Runner. Which uh, also has some cyberpunk elements to it. Um, but, um, 
Yeah, I think, yeah, so Luke K. Dig was one of the first ones to, like, popularize, popularize, or is, like, one of the innovators for the cyberpunk genre. But, yeah, it's very popular. Um, it's worked definitely popular, especially, like, a lot of the... Uh, in, in Japan, the... Uh, Especially people who work in the anime. You also see this in Ghost in the Shell. Like, a lot of the themes, and especially, like, the stuff, like the memory uh, transplant in the Ghost in the Shell. Um, I mean, like, the anime movie, not the live-action movie Scarlett Johansson. But, like, in the live-action, or in the anime, it explores some themes, and also that were first explored in uh, Philip K. Dick's novel, uh, and also to Blade Runner for the extent, even though it's an adaption of the Philip K. Dick story uh, through Android's Dream of Electric Sheep. Although I will give, um, although like Ghost in the Shell, it, it does a little twist to it because it also, it's not also like about like, you know, one of beings to be human or the themes that uh, do Android's dreams of Dream of Electric Sheep like first explored. But, um, but also explores like, sort of like the internet phenomenon, especially like for 1995, especially like hacking, uh, especially like if you have computers in your brains, it could be easily hacked and, you know, fuck up, you know, your memories and stuff for the rest of your life, which can be, I can imagine it can be very, very brutal. So I hope, so I doubt, I mean, I doubt we'll get to the point where we'll, we'll have computers in my brains, but I hope it doesn't become a thing in the future. Can I use a clock key? Alright, so... So Scott, um... Yeah, I think that just stays in there, so we only have to hurt, worry about... Uh... What is it, Mildred and Scott? No, or Mildred and Henry. Uh, let me go back to see. Okay, so Mildred. Okay. Let's remember that. Oh, I think it will make a, a click sound if you got it right. Oh no, wait, this that's the the small or the big one, that's the hour. And the long one is the minute. Okay, right. Sorry. So I'm gonna have to get the minute thing. Jump scare me a little there. Alright, so when you hear that sound, that means you got it, and uh, you should be able to push this. Yep, there we Oh yeah, so um, another fun fact uh, about Silent Hill 2 is that um, so all the face animations you see in the 
I'm not sure if it's all it's if it's also the in-game cutscenes, but in the uh, I know in the uh, CG cutscenes, they were all like for the facial animation. They were all uh, done by hand uh, by uh, you know one of the developers of uh, of, of uh, Team Silent. Uh, and it's also the same for. I'm not sure if he also did the fourth one, but I know he did one through three, and we did the facial animation. Um... Well, I think in Silent Hill three, there's no like CG cutscenes though. It's just all it's all in game. I think uh, Silent Hill one and two are the only ones that feature CG cutscenes. So um, yeah. But also in Silent Hill 3, in the in-game cutscenes for Silent Hill 3, uh, this is one guy, uh, I forgot his name, unfortunately, but he did all the facial animations by hand, which is really cool. And of course, it's not an easy job to do, to do it by hand. And you can say in the, the making of it that at first he did try to do the, uh, the usual facial animation for like the games at the time, but he said he, it didn't look right. He said that it didn't look right uh, to him, so he just uh, stuck with doing facial animations uh, by hand, which I imagine be, must be very, very difficult to, uh, you know, very, very difficult to, uh, you know, painstakingly do all the facial animations for the CG cutscenes. I think he was also the concept artist too. He did the concept art for the character designs. And he also did the. I think he also. I'm not sure if he also did do the character models too. I don't think he did the character models. Probably someone else. Yeah. He only did the concept art. Uh, it was a section of Silent Hill 3. Uh, and I think also 4. And. Um, in the CG uh, for facial animation, I, I think like also in like just the department cutscenes in general. Even if it's, I forgot the word for it. It's like where they have people in these jumpsuits or something, and it tracks their movement in the for the in-game or, or for like the cutscene games or whatever. So yeah. So they only had it in jumpsuits for that, for their bot. Oh, I forgot it was in this room where this part happens. Alright, so we saw from the cutscene there's a key there. So we got that. We got the courtyard key. Yeah, not as. No. There's a painting hanging on the wall. Looks like a landscape of this area. But yeah, I don't know why you would shoot 
the pyramid head thing. Uh, if it's not gonna do much. <laughs> Yeah, I did the cutscenes, the, the facial animation, um, and the comps are with the exception of uh, three. Um, I think he became the cutscene director because I think, like it's usual for the. I mean, it's common in the Japanese entertainment industry. So like if you if you um what is it if you worked under the the director in charge of the cutscenes you won't get credit so he decided to change his position to become director and basically just do most of the cutscene work uh, himself anyway so um, yeah. Which is pretty interesting. Um, it kind of, I, I would say it's also and probably kind of unfortunate that some people don't get credited, um, or like people that work under like the specific position in the video game industry, uh, or like a video game developer, they don't get the credit for working under there, which is. Which is interesting and odd, but also unfortunate. Uh, I guess it's kind of the same thing with uh, with the uh, manga when uh, manga artists and writers like um, they hire people to help them with uh, I think inking and coloring as well. Okay, so we're able to go out through here now. Um, but yeah, I think it's also the same thing with manga artists. If uh, I mean they they do most of the also the pen and inking too, but I think like for some, I think it I might be wrong on this, but it's probably especially for um, especially if you're like working for like a Japanese anime magazine, then you can hire or. Uh, I'm not sure if you can hire some people or if um, there's some people working in a magazine who can come help you with uh, inking and all that stuff. If, uh, I mean, I know the original manga artist and slash writer, uh, depending if they're the same person or if there's a different writer or artist on it. Um, I know, like, uh, they do the penciling. But I think like in some cases, uh, like for inking and uh, inking and coloring, which uh, there's not a lot of coloring when it comes to manga, it's usually uh, black and white ink. But um, but yeah, for the manga, they usually have like uh, inkers like to help them out. I at least like mainly, I guess mainly to get the thing done faster. So they would, so they do it a pencil work, and then they would have like some inkers work on. I don't know what whichever page they had them assigned to and that which they can do, or, or whatever. But yeah, it's interesting to know that if you're working under like a cutscene director, you wouldn't get 
uh, get credit for like not just like for the the CG cutscenes, but also like for the in-game in-game um, cutscenes as well. So I, I say it's probably a good decision on this part, but it's definitely not easy to do to um, to do, to do all that by yourself. But I guess you guys are probably like a workaholic, so. <laughs> Something he decided to do that he can manage, so you know, I applaud him for all that and all the hard work he does, especially for the concept art and the animation, the CG animations, and all that. So, uh, oh, yeah, I was gonna go to this part where there's supposed to be a garbage chute here, should be right here, and uh, I this okay so select is like the actual pause menu which I don't know if there's a point to it since you can use a regular pause menu even if it's just the inventory screen I guess there's this. oh there was a fire escape at the far west end of the second floor hallway and we can use it there okay. Here we're all the way to courtyard. It says courtyard. Okay. But yeah, use that and uh, put it through the chute there. And you should probably go back out and uh, you go to find. Uh, I think it's a coin. That's another puzzle uh, later in the game. It's like a coin puzzle, which not my favorite puzzle because it's kind of a pain to, to figure out. Especially like for from the Paul or whatever, but you know whatever. Garbage bag is torn and contents are strewn all over. I got a coin, old man. What's this? Some Gossip magazine, eh? The police announced today that Walter Sullivan was arrested on the 18th of this month for the brutal murder of Billy Locan and his sister Miriam, committed suicide in his jail cell early on the morning of the 22nd. According to the police statement, Sullivan used a soap spoon to stab himself in the neck, severing his carot carotid artery. By the time the guard discovered him, Sullivan was dead from blood loss. The spoon buried two inches in his neck. An old schoolmate of Walter Sullivan's from his hometown of Pleasant River said, He didn't look like the type of guy who would kill kids. But I do remember that just before they arrested him, he was blurting out all sorts of strange stuff like, He's trying to kill me. He's trying to punish me. The monster. The red devil. Forgive me. I did it. But it wasn't me. Schoolmate then added, I guess now I think of it, he was kind of crazy. <laughs> it's interesting because um, Walter Sullivan, he, uh, he also appears in Silent Hill 4. He becomes like, uh, he, he's like the antagonist of uh, Silent Hill 4, which is pretty interesting to uh, to know. All right, I guess we'll go to the uh, second floor here. Um, what else was I gonna say? Or right, I guess I said about the the cutscene director guy. Oh, I guess I can't go through here. Uh, I guess I can go to the courtyard now. I already went through the uh, fire escape thing. So.
Probably a good time to end the recording here for now. Um, yeah, I guess that's all I have to say. Um, thank you guys for watching this uh, first part of uh, the Let's Play series of uh, Silent Hill 2 for the 20th anniversary. And um, I'll see you guys later. Take care.